Well, if you could open up your Bibles, please, uh, to the book of Genesis. Genesis 22. This passage is one that I'm sure you all know very well, but as I read it, just ask God to help you so that you have uh, a new insight, um, something new that you can learn out of this familiar passage. So let's read from verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand, and a knife, and they went, both of them together. And Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. And they came to the place which God had told him of, And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, uh, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up uh, for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, Uh, In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Let's pray. Thank you so much, Father, for this time that we can look into your word. Help me, Father, as I um, share with people uh, uh, how you have shown me uh, my responsibility as a parent uh, through these verses. Help uh, people uh, to get an inkling of what it actually means to be a parent and, and what it means to bring up our children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So help me now that Christ would be magnified in our midst and it's in his most precious and wonderful name I pray. Amen. Well, I was speaking to a fellow missionary a few nights ago and we were discussing... Um, about the missionary situation. And he agreed with me that there's not many missionaries on the mission field. Um, The need seems to be so great. 
And we, um, you know that verse about the harvest, you know, it's ripe to harvest and all that? Well, if you check out those verses, like in Luke chapter 10, the, the, the prayer that the Lord Jesus asked uh, the, the people to pray were people that were going out onto the mission field. The 12 apostles or the other seven, and the other 70. When he sent them out, he said, you're going out, uh, but pray for more laborers because you're going to find that, uh, that, that you're going to be inundated, that, that, that the need is just so great. And so uh, that has been our prayer um, as believers, as missionaries. The fact is there are lots of missionaries uh, out there in the mission field. Uh, for example, the Mormons, uh, over, they send out over uh, uh, 70,000 uh, there's over 70,000 full-time missionaries uh, out there. Most of them are under 25. Um, every year, about 10 to 27, 10 to 20,000 missionaries, these short-term, you know, young people go out for a two-year stint. Uh, they do. Um, they, uh, a Catholic who's worth his salt will, will want uh, their child... Uh, to be a priest or, or their daughter to be a nun um, because uh, uh, they think that that's going to help them to get to heaven. Uh, the Mormons do it because, uh, because they, when they come back, uh, the youngster might get some position in, a, uh, in one of the churches, uh, be uh, you know, a, a chairman or something like that. Uh, they, that, that's the reasons why they go out. That's the reason why parents want their, their children uh, to, to, to give their lives. Uh, but, of course, that's not our reason. And that could be one of the reasons why uh, missionaries are so sparse out on the mission field, because we're saved and, and, and that's okay. You know, we're under grace and, and so we can just uh, live our lives. But the fact is, is that God is, uh, speaks to us as parents about multiplication. And here was, uh, here was Abraham who was faithful uh, in what he did. Uh, and, uh, and the blessing that was given was multiplication of seed. Uh, so that, uh, that's what we want in our lives. We want, uh, we want to, to be able to bring our children up in such a way that, that, that they will be out, getting the gospel out, being missionaries, being active uh, where they are, and, and their children, and so on. Uh, that, that, that's what's paramount in my life. That's what I want for my children and my grandchildren, and so on. Uh, and, and, and that's what we should want too. And it seems to me that because of parents uh, not bringing up their children the way, they sh the way God would have them, that there's this, that's one of the reasons for the lack of missionaries. Now, I'm not saying that every child that gets brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord will be on the mission field. And I'm not saying that, that every parent that doesn't do that, 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 that the children won't be there. Uh, but I'm just wondering if, gen if in general that is the case for the lack of missionaries. And so God would have us to bring up our children uh, this way. Uh, in, in the nurture, that is, is in, educa in educating them with disciplinary corre correction. Um, to be doing things to nurture a child uh, from the dictionary means to, to promote growth. Um, and, and, ad and, and, ad and in admonition, is speaking about uh, calling our children to attention. Uh, to, to, to give them a rebuke or a warning uh, as they, uh, about what God would have as they, as they, as they grow in up. It's a nurture and admonition of, of the Lord to be instructing them uh, in the duties of, of the Lord. And so what I'd like to look at today is uh, what kind of father, what kind of parent Abraham was. What, what kind of example uh, of a father uh, was he? And so we find that, uh, as in the story we just read, in, in, this, uh, in this small little glimpse of, of history, that um, Abraham's son Isaac was a boy that behaved in such a way uh, that uh, as parents, if, uh, if, if what Isaac went through there, how he behaved with his dad, uh, uh, a son like that, a daughter like that, I, I'd be proud of. Uh, that, that he just obeyed his dad. Um, 
We don't know his age. Everybody's got a different opinion as to what the age of Isaac was. We, we, we don't know. But he probably was a, a late teenager at this stage when, he, when, when his father took him uh, to sacrifice him. And uh, Isaac, at the time when he started out, he didn't know what God, uh, what, what, what God had asked his dad to do. He didn't know that uh, as, as he walked with his dad, what, what his dad um, had planned for him uh, if, with instructions from the Lord. Uh, but uh, he did that obediently. He, 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 he went with him. Uh, in verse 3 we see, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass, took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and, and clave the wood for the burning, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Uh, he had woken Isaac up early in the morning and said, My son, we're going off today. Where, Dad? Don't worry about it, son. We're going. Uh, and, and it seems as though his son, no questions, not saying, Oh, this is too early. I need a bit more sleep. Or, or hang on, I've got things planned for today, Dad. You know, He just obeyed his dad. Uh, and off he went. And so he was obedient to, to his father. Obedient to what his, 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 his father had asked of him. Uh, in verse 7, with respect, he said to his father, and Isaac spake unto Abraham, uh, his, uh, his father, and said, my father. Not, uh, oh, dad, what are you on about again? Uh, is it this religious stuff? You know, is it, uh, uh, you, know, you, you, want, you know, that you want us to partake in something at the church again? I'm too busy. No, he said, my father. And he, and he said, here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? He asked with respect. He didn't understand, uh, but he just trusted his dad. And so we see in verse 9 that he went on with his father. Uh, he took the next step in complete obedience. And, and he didn't fight against it. Uh, and, uh, and, and he would have, uh, as a teenager, uh, he, he probably would have had to climb up onto that altar uh, that his father uh, had made and, and allowed himself to be bound. Uh, and, and there was no rebelliousness. There was no resistance. And I, I, was, I was asking myself, why? You know, uh, how come this, uh, the, the, this, the, this young lad was, was just so fully in obedience? Well, it seems to me it was out of uh, the, the, the life that, that Abraham had been leading and, and in his, in his ob obedience to God, Isaac could trust him. So what I'd like to look at quickly today is, is this testing of Abraham. Verse 1, it says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. Here's Abraham who loved the Lord. He was a saved man. He had, he had put his faith in the coming Messiah. Uh, I believe he had the Spirit of Christ in him, just like all the other pro prophets of the Old Testament. Uh, he was, I believe he was born again. I believe that, that, that the Holy Spirit dwelt, uh, was dwelling in him because the Spirit of Christ was in him. And, uh, and it was a test that, that God was giving Abraham. And so there's a test for all of us uh, in our lives as believers. God puts these tests uh, uh, before us to see uh, what our faith is like, to, to find out how much we do uh, actually love him. And so he's, he, on this day, he, he, he tested Abraham. But we see here that uh, in, the, in this testing, that Abraham uh, was firstly a believing in God father. Uh, he, 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 was, he was a father, he was a parent that, that believed uh, in God. And, and Isaac would have seen this. Uh, when, uh, uh, when God spoke to him, as God does speak to our hearts as we read God's word. Uh, we see there in verse 1 that he was available. God, God called on him and, and Abraham was there. He said, here I am. He, he, he was open to listening to what God would have for him. As we read our Bibles, as we do our devotional time, as we uh, are here today in the preaching, are, are we open enough to be able to say, here I am. Here I am, God. Uh, work in my heart today. Show me the truth. I want to walk in your truth. I want to obey uh, what you'd have for me from your word. Uh, and um, 
there, there was communication uh, with God. Abraham had this communication with God because he was, he was a, sa- a saved man. He was trusting in God. Uh, he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And we, we know the verses uh, where we told that, that God's face is against the unrighteous. If you're not saved here today, uh, God, uh, you might say God has answered your prayer, but he's answering you in spite of yourself. Uh, it might be the next door neighbour and you that's asked for rain, but the next door neighbour is saved. And so the rain might come and you might think, you know, God's answered your prayer, but God, God will not answer your prayers. Uh, you, you cannot speak to God. He, he, he's, not, he's not there because you haven't got a mediator. You haven't got that bridge between yourself and God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so if you're not saved here today, uh, I implore you uh, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe what Christ did for you on the cross. Uh, you, might just, uh, you, you might just think, well, it's good enough that I was born into a Christian family or, or I'm coming to church or, or oh, I, I got baptised or, or whatever. Uh, but God knows your heart and you know your heart and you know whether you're one of his children or not. So uh, Abraham uh, was... Uh, uh, could have this communication uh, because he was a child of God. Uh, but not only did he make himself available to God, but he was also obedient to God. If we see if, uh, in verse 3, it says, And he said, uh, God, God said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And in verse 3, And Abraham rose up early in the morning. And that's what he did. God spoke and he answered. And uh, it seems as though he did it immediately. The next morning, uh, he he had prepared for the journey uh, and that's that's what he did. Now, we wouldn't really understand um, all of this. Some of us might be thinking, why would God... uh, um, want Abraham to do such a terrible thing? Um, Well, I don't believe uh, that that God would have allowed Abraham uh, to physically sacrifice his son. Um, I believe that uh, that what what God was was wanting from Abraham was the spiritual sacrifice of his son. This was the test that he wanted to uh, that, that, that he wanted Abraham to pass. And we'll see more of that. Uh, but um, we, when we hear the words burnt offering, we, we can't really, it doesn't mean much to us uh, because uh, we're, we're, we're not making these physical offerings at this time. But Abraham knew about the burnt offering and then it was put into the law for the nation of Israel uh, later uh, and, and, of course, all these sacrifices are a picture of our Lord Jesus Christ who was sacrificed for us. But just to refresh you, let's have a look at Leviticus uh, chapter 1, verse 9, where the burnt offering is spoken about. Now, keep in mind that the Lord said to Abraham, offer, offer up Isaac as a burnt offering. So in verse 9, uh, it's, it's, it speaks about killing the, uh, killing the bullock and so on. And, and, then, and then verse 9 says, uh, But his inward and his legs shall he wash in water, and the priest shall burn all on the altar. In a burnt offering, the whole animal was burnt on the altar, the, the whole lot, um, uh, uh, on the altar to be, burnt, to be a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire, of a sweet savour unto the Lord. Uh, if we look uh, earlier, you'll see that this offering was a voluntary sacrifice that people brought. It, it, was, it, it, was, it, it was for uh, that they'd bring the best of their, of their cattle, of, of, their, of the lamb or, or the bird, depending on, on, on where they were uh, um, in, their, in their possessions, and they'd voluntarily bring this offering. And, and it that this offering was just offered as a gift to God. Offered as a gift to God. God had given it, and so what they wanted to do uh, was give the best of their flock to God. Uh, so so it, was, it, it was a gift to him. And with this offering um, made by fire, 
The end of verse 9 says it would be a sweet savour unto the Lord. Just in the same way as when, when in Ephesians chapter 5, when God gave his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Christ's sacrifice was a sweet savour to the Lord. It was something that God was pleased with. And so, as we look at what Abraham did, that he was prepared to sacrifice his son, we should ask ourselves that same question. Are we, uh, are we prepared to offer up our children um, to the Lord, to do it voluntarily and, and, and to give back to the Lord our best? Because that's, that's our children, isn't it? I mean, my child is the best. My, my grandchildren are the most wonderful. You know? and, and so uh, you, you can give yours, but, but me, no, no, no. That, you know, I, I want to keep that. I, I, I want, I, I want uh, to, to, to get some uh, advantage, to get some, in Hebrew it's called nachas, some blessing from my children. Um, uh, as Jews, uh, they, uh, my parents never caught this thing of what it meant to, to, have, to be blessed by the children. Uh, for Abraham, if, if we go back to Genesis 22, uh, this giving his son spiritually as a sacrifice, God says, you'll be blessed for that. Uh, not for, no, no, not for what, what you see your, your child do, you know, with a successful schooling, successful career, uh, uh, you know, the best at sport, all this sort of stuff. Oh, they're such a blessing. No, by giving them as a sacrifice. That's what God would have us to do with our children. I wonder if, if the lack of, of missionaries on the mission field is because of, of the wrong attitude we have about bringing up our children. Uh, are we, like Abraham, prepared uh, to, uh, to be obedient to God and, and, and be prepared to, to, to voluntarily uh, give our children to God as a gift and say, God, do with this child what you would have. I want that child to be serving you. Here he is. Here she is. And, and to make that covenant between parents. The thing that really, I was just, my heart just melted. Uh, we met this couple. We knew them. They had six children. The wife, the mum, said to me, my prayer is that each one of those children will be saved and full-time on the mission field. When last did you hear parents saying that? When last did you hear people talking in a group, parents drinking their cups of tea at the fellowship meal or whatever, and talking about their dreams for their children to be on the mission field, to be full-time in the ministry, to, to be active in the church? We very seldom hear that. But Abraham was prepared to sacrifice his son. It's a thing that he had to do. And he had to do it voluntarily. voluntarily. And he had to understand uh, that his offering would be a sweet savour to the Lord. Not the education, not how much money, but... for God to do whatever he wanted to do with that child. So, Abraham was a believing in God Father, and because he was a believing in God Father, he had children that trusted him. He had children that, that, that were willing to go with their dad, with their mum, wherever, because there was the trust that this parent loved the Lord and wanted to do God's will and wanted to walk the narrow way. And so, you want a child to trust you? Be like Abraham. Be a believing in God Father who's available to what God would have and obedient to God. We can't want our children to be on the mission field if we, uh, if we just go in our own way and doing our own thing 
and loving ourselves. You know, and I say to people, the two commands, love, love God and love others, it excludes someone, myself, as we're talking in the Sunday school. It includes me. It's not love God, love myself and love others. And so it, includes, it, it excludes you in your walk with the Lord. It's loving God and loving others. But secondly, Abraham was a working for God father. And because he was a working for God father, not only did, did, did Isaac trust him, but also was obedient uh, to, uh, to his parents. He, 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 out of that trust, he could obey. Uh, if we have a look at verse 6, and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son, and took the fire in his hand and a knife. Listen to these beautiful words. And they went both of them together. They walked together. Both of them. That word together means as a unit. As a unit. The father and the son. They walked both of them together. Doing God's work. Now I know it's good, you know, you take your child to a footy match or or, oh, we had such a good time together. We sat and we watched a movie on TV last night. You know, had some bonding. Uh, those things are good. You know, all, the, all those things. But what about God's work? Uh, they w walked together doing God's work. And with our children, once, once we put our faith in Christ, our children, together with us, were at every Bible study, no matter how late or early, uh, we, they, they were there with us in church. Uh, they were sitting next to us and we were opening up the word with them. Uh, we, 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 we walked together with our family devotional times that we had twice a day. Uh, we walked together as we went out and, hand, and handed out tracts on the streets. Uh, we walked together as we door knocked uh, with others. Uh, we, 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 we were there with our children. I know that you are with your children, but are you with your children in doing the things of God? Because that's the example that our children need, that, that I'm a working for God father. My wife is a working for God wife and, and mother. And, and so a child seeing the seriousness, seeing that, uh, seeing, seeing exactly what we are doing, uh, they will they, they will be obedient children because they'll see that it's not just the words, uh, but but actually the doing. And and this working for God Father, uh, he was there for his son. He was there when his son needed him for advice about the things of the Lord. In verse seven, and Isaac spake unto Abraham, uh, his father, and said. My father. There's so many children saying, My father, my mother, wanting them to be there so that they can ask, they can find out about the things of God, that they can find out about the things in their heart. But they're not there. Often the parents are there physically, but it's, you know, I'm too busy reading. Or I'm on my, you know, my smartphone or whatever I'm doing, and might even uh, might might even hear what the child is saying, but not paying any attention. Uh, and I do that all the time. My wife has to remind me all the time. David, listen to me. Uh, it takes practice. Uh, but oh, uh, when when our child says, "My father, my mother," are we really there for them? Abraham was. And, and Abraham said, and says here in verse 7, and he said, here am I, my son. I'm here for you, my son. Speak. I'm listening. I'm for you. We, we're in this together. Uh, we, we're walking along doing God's work. And, and I'm here for you. And so he taught his son God's way because he was there for his son. When his son was asking the questions about God, about the things of God, he was there for him. And we see that in, uh, 
in, um, in verse 8, we see, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. He gave the only answer that he knew. God had spoken to him. Uh, we see something in the word of God. And, and all we can say is, Thus saith the Lord. But we can only say that if we believe what we're reading. And I always say to people, do you really, really, really believe the word of God? Do you, are you making that effort to understand it? Or is it just some sort of game that you're playing? Um, that, oh yeah, this is the word of God, uh, but I'm really doing my own thing, but you know, uh, it is God's word, but you know, and so on. Are you, are you just going with the flow in this life? That's what I'm seeing here in Australia whenever we come back. People are going with the flow. There's this new word, uh, the, you know, doing what's politically correct. Um, and, and people, uh, and so many of us, we're going that way. And, and yes, I know this is in the word of God, you know, but, you know, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to disturb the, you know, the balance and, the, and all this sort of stuff. No. God would have us to be zealous for the things of God. God would have us to say it like it is. And that's all that Abraham can do. He could have given some story, you know, you know, Santa Claus is coming or something like that. I don't know. But he, he said what, 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 what God had told him. He said God will provide himself a lamb. I don't know anything about Isaac. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. But all I know is is that we are off to make a sacrifice. And at that stage, he didn't feel it appropriate to tell his son that it was going to be him. And there are things in our lives, uh, there are things that, yes, uh, we, we have to keep from our children. Yes, that, we, uh, that, 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 that might be too big uh, for our children at that time in their lives. Uh, but... But we have to trust in God and know that, that uh, even though Abraham, he didn't understand what was going on, he believed, he believed that God would provide himself a lamb. And, and uh, we're talking this morning about doctrine and about people just going off on a tangent. Well, I know what I believe from this word. I might, there might be things in here that uh, that, that I might be having a bit of a problem with. But I'm not going to be just pushed around by every wind of doctrine. Abraham knew, uh, that, knew what God had commanded him, and he went out and did it. He didn't understand all the whys and the wares of it, but he knew that God would provide a lamb. I don't know if you can see that. He knew that God would provide the lamb. He knew that God said, Thou shalt not kill. He, he couldn't understand what was going on, but he knew that God would provide that lamb. God, God would do it, uh, f would some way come in and do it. Uh, but he trusted God. He just trusted God. And so, and so here was this uh, working for God father uh, who, who walked together with his son. He was there for his son. And he taught his son God's way. And... Genesis chapter 18 verse 19 spells this out. God speaks about Abraham in Genesis chapter 18 verse 19 and says like this. For I know him, this is Abraham, that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And so Abraham was a man that um, believed on the Lord. Uh, he was uh, um, a believing in God Father. He was also working for God Father. Uh, and he was bringing up his children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. And God know, knew that. And can he say that about us? Can he say about us that we are going to bring up our children uh, in such a way uh, that and be an example for our children, uh, that they will be wanting to do God's work, that they will be uh, wanting to to follow us 
not in the career, which you know is good at times, but in in the things of the Lord. And not only was he a working God father, but he was a God first father. He he put God first in his life, and so because he did that, um, his children could understand what he was doing. Isaac could understand uh, what his father Abraham was on about. In verse ten. Um, just as Abraham was stretching forth his hand uh, with the knife, uh, uh, about to um, uh, um, kill his son, in verse 11, uh, uh, wait there, uh, let's have a look. Yep, in, v in verse 10, we see, And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took his knife to slay his son. Okay, so just in that verse 10, firstly, uh, it seems to me that Isaac understood that God was going to provide that lamb. Because there's, there's nothing here that he shouted out, that he screamed out. There, there, there's nothing that he said, just let me off this thing. Uh, there was no rebellion. He, he didn't try pull off the, 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 the ropes uh, that he had been tied up with. He seemed to understand and, and, and to, to know that, that God was in control. And he understood what was happening because I can't see other, any other reason why he was just lying there on that altar completely passive and, and that's what I would want from my children and I'm sure you from your children if you were uh, and the way to get that understanding from your children in the things you do uh, is to be a God first father there were some children of David Livingston that understood what their father was doing, but there's others that didn't. There was one son that wrote a scathing letter to his father while he was in Africa and said, Dad, the way, you've, you, the, 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 the way things have gone in the last years, I hardly know you. Um, you you're never back in England. Um, I, I want a father that's with me all the time. Uh, and... and and you've done the wrong thing. He virtually told his dad, you shouldn't have gone to Africa. You should have been here to look after us. And I read the letter that his dad, uh, David Livingston, wrote back to his son. And he said, son, I, I, I've, been, I, I've been making every attempt to be the father that God would have me to be. He said, I pray for you continually. Um, I, I ask God to keep you safe. I, I, I pray and, and, and ask God to, to show you the right way. Um, I, um, I communicate with you whenever I can. I love you, but I know what God would have me to do. This son didn't understand um, what, what his dad was on about. And he landed up, I think in the end, he went to America and landed up in, involved in, this, in, the, in, the, in the civil war there, um, having to kill people and, and all this sort of stuff. He, he, they, 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 they took him into, in, into the army, one or, one or other side, um, and he, he, he landed up uh, dying. And I don't know if he ever put his faith in Christ. But the fact is, is that Isaac understood that Abraham was, to, was prepared to give up everything for his God. See, verse 1 says, Abraham, of chapter 22, uh, verse, verse 2, and he said, God said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. Take your son Isaac, who you love, and sacrifice him. The son who you love. And... Uh, and, and Abraham did what he did, but he was prepared to give up his son for God. He was prepared to sacrifice his son for God. And, and these very well-known verses in Luke chapter 14 have been very difficult verses for me over the years, especially being on the mission field and knowing that my children have been away from, from me, knowing that I've had very little impact on my grandchildren and their lives. Um, uh, Luke 14 says, If any man come to me, uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 26, sorry, If any man come to me and hate not his father 
and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? The fact is, is that our attitude with our family, with our children, as parents, would be to, in our relationship with our God, in our relationship with our precious Saviour, to be able to hate everything else, including our children, for the Lord Jesus. That nothing would come in our way. Abraham might have failed the test and might have said, No, God, that's something I cannot do. This is the person, that this is the child I've been waiting nearly a hundred years for. You promised and promised and, and, and he never came and now you've given to me. I'm not going to give him to you. I'm not going to sacrifice him. But he did. He was prepared to sacrifice his son for his Lord. Spiritually. He knew it was a spiritual sacrifice. Are we prepared to do that? Are we prepared to give up everything, our children, our grandchildren, our comfortable lives for the Lord Jesus? I can't tell you how many people over the 23 years that I've been uh, in Africa coming back and in the beginning a young person would come up and say, God's convicted me. I know I've got to be on the mission field. Come back a few years later to the church. There's the person sitting with a young wife, first child or two, and I've gone up and said, and what happened? I thought you told me that God gave you a vision. I thought you, you told me that God, that God had spoken to your heart about being on the mission field. And they said, well, you know, met this girl, and, and she's not really, you know... Um, in on this mission field thing and then I'm thinking about my children and I've got to educate them and bring them up and, and we've just mortgaged a house and this has happened again and again and again. I wonder if it's got anything to do with the parents. Was that the attitude of the parents with their own children? I'll just finish with this. A young, a young girl was on the mission field, two of them actually, with their, with their parents. Their parents saw the vision. Their parents had sacrificed their children to the Lord. These children put their faith in Christ. Two girls. They grew up. They'd go back to America. They were American missionaries. They had heaps of proposals. They were really pretty young women. Each proposal that came, the, the young ladies would say, well, yes, um, I could marry you, but what would God have for you? And they'd say, oh, well, um, I, uh, uh, you know, I think that I've, you know, I'll, I'll be staying in America or I might do, you know, be, become a pastor or something like that. And the girl would say, but God has worked in my heart to be on the mission field. If, if, you, if you haven't got that same vision to be in Africa on the mission field full time, I know that you are not the man for me. One of them eventually did get married to a man on the mission field. The other lady is now in her 50s, still single, still on the mission field. Because God chose for her not to have a man, or not yet. And I believe it's those parents, those parents that were believing in God parents, working for God parents, and putting God first in their lives. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this time. Thank you for the new heart. Thank you for the love that you've put in my heart for others, Father. Help me to share the gospel. Give me the courage and the strength to win people to Christ. Help me to be like your precious son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as he walked on this earth, as he shared with others how he was prepared to leave heavenly places 
and to come to this earth and to die in my place. Help me to be prepared to die for my friends. Help me to, to be able to sacrifice my children, my grandchildren, to you and to take seriously the need out there in the world for the gospel. We give you praise in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.